Hello and welcome to Sectors Up Close. I'm Ramzan Karamali. Today we're looking at the European car sector and my guest is Joachim Clement, Head of Strategy at Liberum Capital. The first half of 2023 has seen European car sales surge by 18%. In fact, June saw the 11th consecutive month of growth. But compared with pre-pandemic levels, the figures don't look so hot. Sales are actually around a fifth lower compared to the first six months of 2019. Car makers are still working down order books as long-standing shortages of critical components like semiconductors have eased. Additionally, the outlook is clouded by a number of factors, not least the prospect that the supply chain log jams could return in the face of surging demand for EVs. There's also the worry that consumers could cut back spending due to higher cost of living and slowing global growth. Well, despite these potential clouds on the horizon, the sector has done relatively well on the markets. The main index of European car makers is easily outperforming the main stock 600 index. But can these stocks continue zooming along or is there something out there that will put a break on their surge? Well, to help answer those questions and more analysis of the sector, I'm joined by Joachim Clement, Head of Strategy at Liberum Capital. Joachim, thanks so much for joining us. Well, on the face of it, it looks like these shares are performing quite well, but that's not quite the picture, is it? There are some doing better than others. Definitely. There are some stars amongst the automotive sector that have managed to wrap up really, really high margins. I mean, Ferrari is probably in a very league on its own uh, with 26% operating profit margins, which is kind of unheard of in the sector. But also the other kind of luxury and premium brands, Mercedes, BMW, have done extremely well so far and managed to defend profits and profit margins well above our expectations and the expectations of many other analysts. In the introduction there, I spoke about fulfilling those back orders, but is there demand coming behind that? Well, that is the interesting thing and the surprising thing, uh, because the economy in Europe is cooling down. In China, demand isn't really coming back as much as we hoped for after the COVID lockdowns. Uh, and so we're facing now a lot of demand easing and a lot of soft demand uh, to the point where especially German car makers complained during the last earnings season that demand for their electric vehicles is down 20 to 30 percent year on year. Uh, and that is a really major issue for them because their future is in EV and they're trying to uh, move towards EV uh, as fast as they can. Recently, we saw for the first time ever that the sale of EVs outpaced the sale of diesel fueled cars. Um, is this a trend that European car makers are ready for? Are they ready to take on the international competition in this? Theoretically, yes. Uh, they've got the technological know-how, they've got the cars on the shelf, they've got the distribution network. What they don't seem to have is the pricing power. Uh, so investors or consumers are willing to switch brands in EV cars much more easily than in traditional internal combustion engine cars. And that has meant that the German and other uh, premium brand ma uh, car manufacturers are losing market share, particular to the Chinese newcomers, but also, of course, Tesla, which is the big, big name in the game. Looking outside of Europe, uh, we heard just last week Hyundai making a quite a big push in India. How are European car makers faring outside of their domestic market? Uh, they're struggling. Uh, they're struggling because outside of Europe, uh, the price sensitivity is even higher and the brand loyalty is even lower. So in, in countries like India and Southeast Asia, uh, the, the German and, and European car manufacturers are in a much tougher uh, competition with Hyundai and uh, Chinese manufacturers, and they're much more likely to lose market share there. I always ask you this question. You clearly have some favourites in this sectors and some that you don't like so much. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, so I, I would say our the, the companies that we dislike the most are the mass uh, uh, brands, whether we're talking about Stellantis and Renault. Uh, not only do they have low margins, but we expect margins to come under significant pressure over the next six to 12 months because of that competi competition effect and the, the need to compete with Korean and Chinese manufacturers. Uh, the, the two brands and the two cars, car manufacturers that we like the most are the ones that have most of the pessimism in our view already priced in and that is predominantly Volvo cars from Sweden and BMW in Germany. Uh, we expect both of them to have operating margins over the next in 12 months of about 6% and the, the market is pricing in 6 to 7% at the moment. So that seems reasonable to us and much more interesting than those mass manufacturers. 
Joachim Clement from Liberum Capital. Many thanks for that. And that is your roundup of the European car sector. I'm Ramzan Karamali, and this is Reuters.